Hi year 10, today we're going to carry on the same format as yesterday so we're going to look at questions 3 and 4 of paper 2 um, which includes the evaluation question. Now you did some work on this last week so I'm hoping that some of this will be just recapping um, and will be completely familiar to you, there shouldn't really be anything new um, but it's just a chance to practice it again um, and I, as I did yesterday please check show my homework to see if there are any uh, if your name's listed for you to submit today uh, just to stress that I do want you to, su to submit it marked because part of what I want to check is that you are marking accurately in the right way because that's a really important skill for this paper um, you know if you can mark it accurately you can write it accurately so please do make sure you mark it first and then send it to me because I want to give feedback on both your answers and your marking Okay, so um, as we did yesterday, I'd like you to read and get ready. Um, and this is the process I want you to go through in your exam as well. So you'll have already read text one and answered questions one and two. Now what you're going to do is you're going to read questions three and four first. You're going to then read text two, which is in the question paper uh, PDF that I sent you. Um, and then you're going to highlight anything that's relevant as you read. And um, again, you might need to sort of jot notes down if, if you haven't got a way to do that on your computer or if you, if you can't print it. Um, can you time yourself? So whereas yesterday I said to try and do it in five minutes, I feel like that was a little bit limiting. Actually, you do get um, 20 minutes reading time for this paper if you think of it as a marker minute. So, you know, you don't need to squ squash it into five minutes at all. So can you just take your time now, read through questions three and four so you know what you're looking for, read text two and just take a note of how long it takes you and kind of reflect on that. And it'll obviously, you know, the longer you take, then you might need to spend, you know, you might need to practice writing quicker, for example. But at the end of the day, as long as you are, if, as long as you're coming in about 10 minutes, you're absolutely fine. Okay, uh, so pause the video now and do that for me, please. Okay, so we're going to launch straight into question three then, while well, that's fresh in your brain. Um, same as question one, it's just that this these comprehension questions are based on a different text and usually a trickier text because it's usually the um, quite the older text. So um, there are the three questions. You've got them in the question paper. A reminder that you just need to write down the answers and if it's a marker minute then you should be trying to do this in three minutes so you might have bought yourself some extra time from mark from reading in less than 10 minutes um but have a go time yourself see if you can do it under three minutes and just write down the answers okay pause the video please and off you go all right guys so here are the answers for um question three so again same as yesterday you're just looking for the word sunday the word 25 miles and either he found himself clinging to a tree or he ran for his life that's it if you've got anything else you've got it wrong they've really cut, cut through these these responses and um, to give yourself a mark out of three for that um if you ever got any questions let me know but they are usually quite straightforward and again hopefully you've got three out of three um because it is just that sort of basic comprehension but don't beat yourself up if you haven't because like i said it's very easy to make silly errors on these one mark questions and uh, they do can trip people up okay so that's it for question three it's the same as question one nice and straightforward the evaluation question then um i just want to stress because it didn't last week they can be written in a variety of ways but it has for the last three years always been question four but just look out for anything where it asks for your own opinion and that is the evaluation question so you might want to jot this down um, in terms of um, you know notes of different ways it can be structured so it might start with how well do you think such and such captures which is when you need to give your opinion sorry so you will give your opinion on when the writer captures i think that's supposed to say what i have written this sentence but i don't know what i mean so that's not a good sign i'm pretty sure it should say what the writer captures and then comment on when it's most effective and then it might just ask you to give your thoughts and feelings, which is what we saw last week and also what you've seen on paper one. Um, so again, where you just give your own opinions on what the writer believes. All right. So there's different ways it can be phrased. And I just want to stress that to you so you're not thrown um, next year. If you come across one that you're like, oh, that, that, that doesn't look like an evaluation I've seen before. Just make sure you look out and ask yourself, are they asking for my opinion? Are they asking for my thoughts? Um, and usually it's question four or 14. 
All right, so in this case, I think this is actually a really nice evaluation question um, because it leads you to track the text and it leads you to think about um, how the whole text is structured. If you remember yesterday, we talked about how that's always a mark on the mark scheme to think about how the text is put together. So I think this really helped students to do that. So uh, Sandra gets across his feelings of increasing terror really well. How far do you agree with this statement? So it's clearly asking you how far you agree. Remember, we don't insult the writer. We don't say we don't agree. We are looking for evidence that he gets across his feelings of increasing terror really well. Now, as always, we've got what he says and how he says it. And our key phrase that pays in this case is increasing terror. Please do not forget the increasing part. This isn't just about where, there's, where is terror created. By thinking about increasing terror, you need to be tracking and you need to be linking parts of the text together, which, you know, you should see a buildup of terror across the text. And hopefully having read that, um, you already can think of lots of examples. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out at this point is you know that you've got a comparison question coming by the end of this paper. And I think what really stands out from these questions immediately is um, a clear difference. So here we've got somebody getting his own feelings of increasing terror across whereas in the first text we had somebody who's creating drama and excitement do you remember the how question so you've all though what i want you to be trying to do to you know make make the most of your time and really get engaged with these texts so that you write a really good comparison straight away when you read these questions be thinking right there's a difference you know we know from the first text that this this that was a journalist it was a third person he wasn't at the event directly he didn't experience it personally here's someone who is so you've got already two comparative what marks and and, and method marks there just from the questions so use the questions to give you hints for later on for the comparison all right so um as always then what you're going to do and you should have already had a go at doing this when you read the text is you should be highlighting where is captured terror but you need to be paying close attention to how it builds and how it all links together because we're looking for increasing terror and remember that it's the writer's feelings of increasing terror that we're looking at not you as a reader okay it's how the writer feels then once you've done that once you've highlighted your quotations then you might want to just label some methods or like note down for yourself which methods you're going to use again all of this might need to be written out by hand it'll take a bit longer um, but if you can, just copy and paste parts of the text onto a PowerPoint or Word and, and just sort of add lines onto the top of them. I've also got the text here. So if you wanted to, and, and on the next slide, oh, sorry, I've got them all lines first. Um, so if you wanted to, you could always pause the video and, and use this instead because screenshot it as an image and then add, add to it on top. Um, because I thought the text is a bit bigger here. Okay, so um, I'm, like I did yesterday, I'm going to take you through like the first few um, things that I would highlight. Now, originally, I, I think my order's about, I think my lines are going to come up in the wrong order, sorry. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just, I'll let the lines direct my order that I'm talking to you. But um, there is one in the first paragraph, but it's going to come up last because I did it in last. So there you go. All right, so the first thing you can see that I've highlighted technically is this very loud so Sunday afternoon the noise of the volcano erupting grew very loud now originally I highlighted that thinking well you know that that's the start isn't it because that's it's growing very loud it's, it's becoming worse so there's a sense of increasing terror there because the you know noises like that are scary aren't they they're unusual they're unnatural so I highlighted that initially um then with the very then I also highlight completely covered in smoke because that's quite a horrifying image, isn't it? Imagine looking out the window and seeing this mountain next to your house or near your house just completely covered in smoke. And um, so, again, there's a sense of increasing terror because it's the feeling that, you know, this thing is coming for them. I also I could have highlighted thick darkness, but I decided instead to highlight I could not see my hand both suggest the same thing really and that is that it's going to be hard for them to escape so that's increasing terror they can't actually see where they're going and I felt like thick darkness is a lovely line and it's quite a nice method the word thick the adjective thick but I felt like I could not see my hand really convey the impact and therefore why he was so scared because he couldn't see you know like thick darkness doesn't necessarily mean you can't see you might have a torch 
but he literally could not see his hand and that to me is the, the scariest part of that sentence so that's why i've selected that over thick darkness thick darkness is not wrong though okay um i did not I decided not to highlight towards night everything became worse now you might think that 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 is a good one to highlight and it absolutely is i just feel like it's a bit on the nose it's a bit obvious um you know it's like saying um how does the writer make this dramatic and then you fit the quotation it was all very dramatic do you know what i mean it's just a bit obvious um but having said that you know becoming worse is the perfect increasing terror link isn't it so you would get a tick if you said if you if you selected it i was just being a bit selective um i did highlight however the eruptions became deafening now um to me at this point what i did was i thought well actually i can't have very loud and then it became deafening because they're both about the sound of the volcano and they're both clearly linked now if my question is increasing terror i have here two very perfect quotations to, to link together to show that there is increasing terror because from very loud to deafening is clearly an increase in terror isn't it it's getting a lot worse a lot louder so what i have decided to do at this point is i'm going to link those two points together into one sentence when i write up my answer all right um and remember again at this point now i've got three three points from the first paragraph i know that the text isn't very long um but just remember to make sure you've got that range throughout the whole of the text um i did go back and add on this one at the top now originally i didn't highlight anything in the first paragraph i, I read it and i thought well to me that's not increasing terror because at that point this is like a summary of what happened isn't it it's his, his, his it's him looking back so how can it really be an increasing sense of terror you know you can see that the change of tone there it began on the sunday afternoon he's taking us through what happened step by step in this paragraph so i felt like that's where i should start looking however i did a bit of reflection and kind of thought well to highlight that he lost everything in, in paragraph one kind of does indicate the terror that's to come um and it's not particularly terrifying because we know he's survived do you remember we, we talked about that in the method yesterday you know we if he's writing this account then he obviously survived um but so that's actually quite a nice starting point to start with that that he highlights at the beginning that he'd lost everything this is obviously going to be very terrifying but at this stage we know that he got out and and he escaped and therefore it, it starts off at a low point of terror all right um so obviously you can keep going and highlighting um other elements of the text that, that you think create increasing terror so can you pause the video now and do that for me please try and get 10 okay so you have got the text there if you wanted to if you wanted to use that right so now we're going to start thinking about our write-up this is what you've already done last week you've already had feedback on it so hopefully you should be confident with how you write this so i think slash feel plus your quotation plus your inference and then i think slash feel plus your method quotation on reason or effect for your um method mark remember to link to the question so with this one i have done the first three points for you I've not done your overview um, and again i've done that because i feel like that uh that idea of linking very loud to became deafening is we haven't done that very often so i wanted to give you an example of that as well all right so um you can copy these out and label them if you want to the colors linked to the to the, the formulas at the top so you can label them with the actual um symbol um and but you don't feel like you need to use these three in your answer if you don't want to okay so i feel it is effective to start the account with damage with the damage done i have lost everything as it sets the scene for something terrifying to come so that's just my write-up of what i've already said to you that's how it would look in a sentence okay now i want to stress that just identifying that the writer has chosen to start the account with the damage done is a method that is a choice that the writer made in future years i'm going to teach this as writer's choice instead of method i think so try to see it in that way it's a choice 
I think the build-up from very loud to deafening effectively conveys increasing terror as the noises from the volcano are becoming more unbearable. So we're pinning down that it would be unbearable and scary. Yeah, we've got the clear focus on the question effectively conveys increasing terror. Um, you've got the I think, which is required for the evaluation question. And then you've got the really nice two embedded, very precise quotations there. OK, now this will still only get you one mark because you I know it's two quotations, but it's really just one point. However, if the examiner sees a line like that where you've brought two quotations together to, to sort of talk about how it effectively builds, you're going to be look. they're going to be looking to give you the top band. All right. So it's worth it. It is worth it. And then finally, I just wanted to show you a straightforward what sentence. Next, I think the announcement that he could not see his hands creates a sense of increasing fear as this will make it harder for him to escape. So we give a reason, we pin down a inference. Um, I've put increasing fear instead of increasing terror. You can write increasing terror all the way through if you want. It's absolutely fine. Um, but there's three sentences to get you started if you need them or just to give you an idea and you can just start with your own if you want to. OK, so can you pause the video now and have a go at writing the rest of your response? Now, if you think about 12 minutes per response or sort of a minute a mark ish, ideally you'll write this in about 10 minutes. Um, but please don't panic if you can't. I just want to kind of give you a, a goal to reach, you know, by the end of next year. Hopefully that's that's what you'll be able to do. So pause now and finish your answer. OK, guys, and um, we're going to have a look at marking now. So I've got for you here an example of, of almost what not to do, really. It's a four or five mark answer. Um, this is from the exam board. The exam board said that there was some relevant selection and comment. Um, and you can see by the ticks that they've only got four ticks. Now, the ticks are in a bit of dodgy places because the, when they scan them in the board, it, it kind of moves the ticks a little bit. Um, so remember, we always want to take over our inference. But I just wanted to show you this one as a kind of, you know, it, it's a, it's a it's a grade four or five answer, isn't it? But I just wanted to show you it as a kind of like what we're going to try and avoid to do doing ourselves. So I agree with this statement. This is because he does not seem too concerned at first. Then we notice that the verb noticed is rather passive and so shows that the people were not too bothered about the volcano being completely covered in smoke. Now, the board have ticked that. It's quite a valid comment to say, you know, we noticed. That doesn't particularly seem very scary, does it? So that's a really good point. However, look at how long it's taken them to secure that tick. It's a lot of sentences and it's a lot of words. And you can see all the way through, really, they're doing a paragraph per tick a lot of the time. And that is not the approach we want to take. We want one paragraph, one sentence per, par one sentence per tick. However, Sandrick's terror is shown when afterwards came the thick darkness. The metaphor suggests the conditions were unbearable. In response, he is truly terrified. I coward, panic stricken. The emotive adjectives show that he could not move. He was so scared. This makes the reader pity him. This is full of waffly literature type information. And I really hope you can see that straight away. Um, Sandrick's terror is shown when afterwards came the thick darkness. OK, and they've ticked over it's the tick is over unbearable where you've kind of got an inference. I think that's a bit weak. Um, and if we wanted to write that really concisely, we would just say Sandrick's terror is shown through the metaphor, thick darkness, which suggests the conditions were unbearable. Yeah, so you've got it all in one sentence. Um, the Coward panic stricken is a great quotation. Hopefully some of you have picked that out because um, obviously that definitely shows increase in panic. Um, so they've ticked that as well. But again, we've got a separate sentence with a method mark, trying to get a method mark. The emotive objective show he could not move. He was so scared. Please make sure you've not done that. Instead, he should have written or she should have written. In response, Sandrick, is, uh, Sandrick uses the... Um, it's not even a motive object, is it? is it? I will talk about the verb coward to cower. Um, the Sandrick uses the verb coward um, with the adject is panic stricken to highlight that he was so scared he could not move. Tick. One sentence. Do not ever write this makes the reader pity him. That's irrelevant. The question's asking you how the writer shows increase in terror. Just ignore that. Don't ever write anything like that. Okay. 
Uh, Sandrick's terror is shown by the description of the oncoming tsunami with a loud roar and like a giant hand. The use of personification and a simile show that he had no chance. Now, this is the kind of answer that the examiner, when we go to our examiner's meetings, would read as a kind of, did read it in that repetitive voice, the use of personification and a simile. It's like an answer where they're just throwing method mark after method mark at the examiner and hoping that it'll get them ticks and it just won't. I know there is a tick at the end, but that's because he's pinned an inference or she's pinned an inference that there is no chance against the giant tidal wave. It left that, de that devastation. It's not because they're able to label personification and simile. And really, they've not really pinned down the effect of the personification or the simile. So again, to make that better, it could have said, I am going to ask you to improve answers next week. So that's why I'm doing it this for you. Um, Sandrick's terror is highlighted by the personification of the tsunami, loud roar, um, you know, highlighting how devastating it was going to, how powerful and devastating it was going to be. Tick, move on. Yeah. But then to also talk about the simile, you know, that could be on, that could actually be a separate point. Yeah. He uses the simile like a giant hand to show highlight how overpowering the tsunami was, creating the sense of increasing terror. Um, the people would have felt, as the people would have felt helpless. All right. Um, the last point is just got a perhaps from the examiner. So his terror is increased, um, which is shown by the devastation left by the tsunami, many dead bodies, and how completely the place has been swept away. The adverb shows that he does not know what to do now as, in, as, his, as his entire home has been destroyed. I don't really feel like that's relevant to the question. Um, that's not about terror, is it? Um, it? The aftermath is, I think when you get to the aftermath, it's not terror that you feel. It's it's just sorrow, isn't it? It's utter despair. Um, and I think maybe the terror would come from the future. Like, what am I going to do now? I have no home, but that's not been pinned down. So if you've written something like that, that would be much better. So as a result, this person got four slash five, um, band two slash three. An examiner who would give this band two would be put off by the focus on methods and terminology instead of the what. An examiner who would give it band three would say, well, they have started to comment on language, so we're going to give them five out of ten. So just bear that in mind. I hope that that's taught you kind of what not to do. And, and I think a lot of you know, hopefully I'm not taught you anything there that you didn't already know and that you wouldn't already know not to do or at least try not to do. Um, so that's that's good for you to use. I, I wish I'd shown you this before I asked you to write your answer. Never mind. Right. This is um, an eight slash nine mark response. And this is the biggest, the best one I can find from the exam board from this year. This was 2018's paper, by, by the way. Um, so I'm not going to read all this out. The ticks are there. Bear in mind, they might have moved slightly, but you can see which sentences they've been given ticks for. Um, but I just thought it was interesting to draw your attention to the comments. They were looking for, for responses that track the text well to show the increase in terror decent selection of quotations, so they're picking relevant points out and they're making relevant comments. Um, so eight slash nine, really high mark, easy to get a grade nine if you're getting that mark on uh, consistently on the papers. Um, so pause the video, have a read through to kind of give you an idea of how you could have got that mark and then you can compare it to yours. Okay, once you've done that, this is the actual mark scheme. As you can see, there's not as many points as there was in the how question that we did yesterday. So that makes this a little bit of a trickier um, answer to get full marks on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, there's only nine bullet points, so that says it all. <laughs> I think in bullet point two, where it focuses on detailed description of the sights and sounds of the volcano, there are loads of points within that point that you could have picked up. And don't be afraid of giving yourself a separate mark for each one. OK, so I want you to use this now um, same way we did yesterday. Think about if there's anything you hadn't spotted and make a note of yourself for that. Think about if there's a certain part of the text that you're not addressing. But most importantly, use the model answers and this these bullet points to go through and tick up what you've um, what you think you've done. And if you're the person, one of the people who's sending me your answer, please send me your answer once you've finished that. OK. Um, I'm, I don't want to exclude anyone else. If anyone else is really worried about their answer or one of the sentences or wants to check anything, you know, you can let me know. Just message me. I'll get back to you. Um, but hopefully you're feeling quite confident. Can I just put it in context that if you're getting seven out of ten on these questions, 
um, that's easily a grade seven. So, like I had students who I've told you before, I had students who get grade nine, who when you look at the reading answers, they weren't getting a, above six out of ten on them, but they still got grade nine overall. Obviously, the writing was really solid, um, but please bear that in mind and don't put too much pressure on yourself with these. Um, you know, you can get ten out of ten on one answer and six out of ten on another, and it's not because your skills have got worse; it's just the text and and how easy it is to spot the points they want you to. Okay. All right, guys. Um, so I'll leave you with that, and then I will be back on Thursday to finish off the paper. Goodbye.